you know when we start. Okay, I think we're on. Perfect. I think we're on. We might be on. Yeah. We might not be. Okay. <clears throat> seconds, if you're just coming on, thank you. Okay, meeting is now streaming live. I'd like to introduce my friend, Elliot Freed. And we met on this wonderful forum of Facebook, right? We met on this wonderful forum of Facebook. I don't know how long, it's been at least a couple of years I've been following your posts. Yeah. And you know how it works, the universe brings each other to each other. And I've, I've been mutual admirers. Yeah. And I've really appreciated your posts. They've been very penetrating. They've been, I'll, I'll tell you my experience of your posts and your shares. They've been caring of the common person, an everyday man, an everyday woman, an everyday child. They've been taking into account the, the deeper meaning and origins of illness and sickness physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, societal. And you're brilliant in so many ways, but what it really comes across is your care and your humanity and your humanness. And that's why I was, you know, drawn to ask you to be here and to just have a chat and share with our friends here. So welcome friends, anyone coming on. I'm just going to double check. We're on here. Yep, we are. So, first of all, um, so that's a little introduction of you. You're in, in your uh, Chan practitioner, which we can dive into a little. And yeah. you, you dove down the whole Chinese medicine and that whole route and so much more. So kindly just give a minute of introduction and then let's just jam about what's going on today. And what's all right. On. An introduction. I give a minute of introduction. All right. Yeah. I, uh... When I was 12 years old, I asked the question, what is it to be human? And I've been on this exploratory journey ever since. And if I were to come up with any sort of simple summary of what I found, I would say it's to relate, to be in relationship uh, with, with each other, with you, with within myself. There's an infinite field of relationship uh, with the animal, the, the vegetable world, the, you know, who knows how far it extends and how deeply down it goes. Um, and so my the driving emphasis of my life has just been that continuing exploration, that continuing opening to the experience of being and the experience of connecting and, and receiving and giving. Um, and letting that, that openness guide where I go, what I, what I contribute, what I am open to. Um, and, you know, so part of that was, took me down the healing path. Uh, I got started when I was about 14 with bodybuilding. That got me into stretching, which got me into yoga, which got me into the yoga sutras and the, you know, the Tibetan Buddhism. And that just has, uh, you know, kind of carried on through life. And so then, you know, in, in relationship, how does one relate in service, I think is, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of ways to relate, but uh, to be of service, I, I feel is a value. And so healing and medicine became part of that study. And then I found also just um, in practicing medicine, so much opens up, you know, I would sit, I sat with, uh, you know, a thousand, two thousand people where I, I, you know, I put my hands on their heart, essentially, as I'm listening to their story. And to have that kind of, of connection with somebody and then with thousands of people has been, um, you know, transformative. I mean, over the years we transform, but this has really given me a, a much broader sense of how we are all so connected and how we are all, even if, as we experience our uniqueness and our individuality, as I experience your uniqueness and your individuality, my experience only exists because you exist or because other people exist, because planet, the sky, everything in between. Um, 
and you know, and so then of course with, with healing, you deal with the specifics too, but it's kind of a general outline of what I've been up to over the last 30 years or so. Thanks brother. So what the heck is going on right now, man? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what the heck is going on? How the heck did we end up here? And, and like, how the heck do we move forward? So, yeah, we got like a thousand years. <laughs> I spoke with some astrologists before this whole event went down, and they said what was coming was a 2,000 year transformation cycle. The alignment to the planets is something that happens every 2,000 years. So, you know, it's, it does feel like a biblical end times kind of thing in a way, doesn't it? So much is just open, so much is on the table now, so much has been exposed, so much is being exposed, you know, on sort of the global political level, but also inside of us. Uh, I've had amazing opportunity to dive into myself and into my most intimate relationships. And uh, so, you know, whatever the stars are saying, that's sort of my, been central to my experience of this whole event. Um, and, but then looking at the big picture, you know, I feel like in a way humanity has been calling for this. You know, I had a, I have a friend who we were in the hot tub the other day and, you know, me and her and her husband, we were just hanging out and we had some nice food, but she was Sunday night at seven o'clock, her phone was ringing, people calling from work. Like there's no escaping that. How do you, that's so much pressure to live under. It's not Monday through Friday from nine to five. It's, and everybody's on the phones all the time. And, and so we're losing this connection to each other, losing this connection to the planet. And it's just constant. And so in a way, I feel like, I mean, there's so many ways to look at this, but it, it feels like humanity is kind of going through this nervous breakdown, you know? Um, and I posted about that earlier this morning, this, this idea that we're- Interesting, talking. nervous breakdown, yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what do you see? What do you, I'm curious. Well, you know, I think the rigor of our Zen study practice continues to sort of undermine whatever um, solid formations that keep coming up day after day. Whenever it starts to get solid, there's some information, some insight, some perspective, and some self undermining just to keep myself really present to the nakedness of it. So that's been my primary internal practice of it. But in terms of intuition, senses, in my small, tiny world, it's a dualistic reality. There's a dark and a light in every moment, in every experience is what I'm feeling. There's an opportunity, as you shared, to go deeply within. And there's also at the same time, a very strong exteriorization of contact. Yeah. There's an opportunity that we all um, succumb to greater rivalry, revert further back to our reptilian or our primordial brain stem. As more fear hits, those we're processing, I'm seeing the fear in a healthy way are going more to the front of their consciousness. They're aiming to um, cultivate compassion and deeper empathy. The um, pressure of the moment is, is, is allowing them, as you shared, to uh, look at the sadhana, receive this as a form of spiritual practice, uh, a self-chosen austerity, uh, a mindfulness time, a time to uh, get real, get freaking real. So I think that's also what's going on for myself, my family here. I'm seeing it with my friends. I'm inviting everyone to it, is to get really real. Because I believe that the systems that, so, that we've created as a society, this is the result not the, I mean, it could be, it could be that this is manufactured. It could be that it was due to 
uh, the way that animals are being consumed and harmed and treated. It could be from unsanitary conditions. It could be all these multiple mutations, diabolical to spontaneous. There's so many permutations and ideas flying around. But nonetheless, it's like, it is what it is. Right. And the opportunity that I'm seeing here and I'm feeling is, is either we collapse into animalism, become more factionated, which is the propensity, which unfortunately feels how a lot of the majority rolls. And then there's pockets of, of, of light awakening, embrace. And I'm loving that. And I'm keeping my eyes focused on that. And I'm promising myself to stay deluded in that illusion. <laughs> source myself in optimism to face the brunt of the insanity and the, the near impossibility of, of not heading on a path of total human, not Gaia-centric, human uh, self-destruction or a vast amount of us. Or of this virus being one thing. Like... You know what I want to see? Like, to be honest with you, if I just let the fire up, what I want to see is that whatever momentum that the world forces are doing towards this, we're, we're going to be seeing all the supply chains, all the emotional chains, all the grid works that are working that we can strengthen. And we're seeing where are the grid works, the supply chains, where is our emotionality, greed, vying for more profits to get stuff needed to other people. That could really use it now and allowing you know um, self-gain be the primary motive we're seeing all of that because if not if we were gaia centric if we were you know what if the what if the diabolical plan to have one world government is actually the best freaking idea on the planet so that we can all come together but a benevolent enlightened grid work of wisdom masters anyways i'm going on here but <laughs> that's the fantasy that i that that I'm stoking in myself. The philosopher king of Aristotle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm kind of on the opposite end where I feel like I want, I want to be a part of community, a living community. And to the extent that there is some, you know, overstructure, it's, it's in service, it's an understructure in a way. Yes. It's, a, it's, it's the mycelial mat. Of, of, uh, so there's this, there's this mycelium under the forest floor you know, it sprouts up as the mushrooms, but the, the, the mushroom is the, the sexual activity, the reproduction of the true organism, which is this mycelial mat, which it carries nutrients from that which is decaying and dying to that which is new life. And it circulates the information, the actual content of the, what has decayed, uh, and it, it unites the entire forest by being beneath the ground. Yeah. And I feel like in a way, you know, we, we can complain about the digital world and Facebook and all those things, but I've connected with so many people across the globe that are in some way a part of this exchange of information. And for years, I've been seeing the U.S. in particular, but industrial society as this um, concrete building. And it's, you know, a building only lasts so long. and The, the, the life comes out under it. And, and breaks through the concrete. Anybody who's got a tree growing near, near their driveway knows this, right? That the, 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 the life itself is gonna break through the concrete eventually. And so it feels like this structure has been very wobbly for quite some time. And it's starting to, it's been cracking. Is this the final collapse? Are there multiple structures that have to collapse before it's all complete? I don't know, but it feels like a big step down of the industrial world. And there's a lot of people who are identified with that industrial world. You know, to a degree, we all are. And so there's this huge loss occurring. You know, it's, it provides me with my clean water. It provides me with my food. It provides me with my sense of who I am. It provides me with my relationships. And as that whole thing is, you know, at, at best vibrating and possibly crumbling, who am I really? Who are you really? What is this life really? And I feel like that mycelial mat, that mycelial network that we're all a part of 
is um, it's moving information around. Yes. And I feel like there's so much creative potential now. There's so much creative potential coming. Yes. You know, right now it's like you're talking about, it's like you almost have to just surrender to what's happening uh, because we're used to this, this structured formatted thing and we can structure and format within that. But as we're becoming part of this living web of life, everything relies on everybody else. And so I can't just take power over that. I can't just yank that whole web the way I want to, because there's other people yanking it the way they want to. And how do we, how do I say, hey, brother, what do you need? What do I, can I ask for what I need? Can we make that into a functional living root system, forest, wilderness? Or are we going to continue to try and sort of make everything concrete? We're all looking for the concrete story. We're all looking for the foundation, the, the, the floorboards, the, the walls, the, the roof, the, the door, the windows. And we're out in the wilderness, man. <laughs> you know, is that... Does that make any sense to? Yeah. You know, you said something very, very powerful here, your vision of the mycelium. And I saw a recent movie, Fantastic Fungi. It's a brilliant movie. If you haven't seen it, all of you, please go see it. It's extraordinary in, in expressing and sharing in such a beautiful artistic way, the, the artistry of the mycelium world and the mushroom world and in a way i what i was seeing when you were sharing was the matrix world mm -hmm. the world that my one of my mentors um stewie used to call the world of TikTok, mechanical man tick tick tock run by a clock run by a time run by something on the hand rather than the the sky and the sun and Heart, you know, yeah. and so I saw the world of TikTok, but also what I'm feeling is this this underground what we're doing here, we're growing this underground mycelium that's underneath the matrix, mm -hmm. and this time is a time for fast growth of that mycelium when it's nurtured, even while the matrix is still going on trying to hold on, trying to repair itself, trying to, you know, print trillions here to, to secure uh, some probably strongholds for those who don't need any more stronghold securing. <laughs> and suck the rest of the wealth from everyone and give them a grain of sand or rice, you know, to, to try to fill their hungry belly with a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars or whatever, <laughs> right? This whole thing is going on on the surface, but I feel that us, what you just shared, you know, the growth of this underground sacred mycelium, this unity, this humanity, this Gaia-centric, already Gaia-infused knowingness. Now I'm seeing birds, beautiful coming out, it's spring here, nests. Like they don't, like there's no manual. They didn't go to any school to learn how to make nests. They didn't have to have any degrees, ask permission. It was already an inherent knowledge of how to make this beautiful nest from things all around in its yeah. environment and make it so it's safe for their children, mostly safe. It has hazards, the natural world, like any world. All worlds have hazards, the matrix and the, the, the world of Gaia. But I'm yeah. seeing that growing, and I'm, and I'm, I'm just like... I'm asking all of us here, everyone who's watching and listening to really take up being the, the, the nurturance of this underground connection. You know, going to your neighbors, as you said. You know, I was with our neighbors, my wife and I, both sides. You know, hey, do you guys need anything? Anytime you want, please give us a call. They said, please, anything you need, we are there for you. We have a uh, place where we're growing vegetables and fruits, self-reliance and, you know, living, my son is returning to the land and taking pride and dropping into his soul and being like in a way I've never even felt. 
So for me, there's two ways to grow now this mycelium of being. I believe that it's already inherent in us, first of all. The assumption that the knowledge of how to work together as a whole is already there. That the harmonious vibration and intuitive inner knowingness that has been atrophied from lack of presencing will come back into deeper presencing. And that's what's happening now. So all the internal agitations are the, the matrix coming in, but it's trying to stay in you. But the purification of stillness, of doing less, returning back to the cycles of life more and more, the cycles of the greater existence, is, 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 is so that those two things are in this moment to make best uses of what I'd love to share is to ask and the essential inquiry, Chan inquiry of all time, Bichara, who am I? Keep asking whatever arises, let it go. And then get, who am I? Who is the one that's asking that? This inner reflection and not stopping at personality levels or degrees or knowledge of self going beyond until you've emptied out of the knowledge of self, all the ideas you have and keep asking with genuineness. That's number one. And number two, perhaps the call end of this time is who are we? May I insert one in between? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Who are we? I love it. Love it. Yeah. I want to see who's joined us here. Let me say hi. Carol. Hi, Carol. Tara. Welcome. Whoever's here. Appreciate you. I hope you're all doing well. Anyone like to share how you're doing, what's deepest in your hearts, what's alive and real for you, please feel free to share in the uh, comment box. What else is on your heart, brother? Well, uh, go back to that question, what's most alive and real for me? You know, I feel like this with this opening, with this healing, there's so much going on in terms of my own healing. And, you know, if I may share a story, when I was five years old, my parents had this sort of explosive fight, which I can now look back and see how there was this thing that had been stored in my mother since she was very young that was coming out at the time. And it caused this kind of wall between all of us in the family, all the siblings, my parents, the siblings of the children and the parents. And over the last few years, that's been shifting but in this, since this has begun, and actually it was before the COVID-19 thing really started to take off, but there was this major opening within the family, within my mother, uh, where she is transforming. You know, she's 76 years old and she's going back through these things that happened when she was two years old, two and a half. Uh, you know, as she grew up in, as a young woman, as a child. She's opening all that had sort of closed down in her in order to protect herself from that, in order to, you know, feel like she could survive in a world that could do that to people. All of that's opening up. And that little girl in her is coming out. And sometimes it's difficult for her because it was painful. So there's this stored pain. But then there's also the, the positive aspect of being a two and a half year old is coming back. And she's able to integrate it. As a, as a woman in her mid seventies, she's able to integrate that. And then that's having an effect on me and on my father and on my siblings, even though they're not here, I still see and feel them processing what they received at that time. Yes. Um, and so in a way I feel like, you know, going back to the planets, I've sort of seen how the planets are a few of them lining up and it's almost like they're grinding on us, but it's like they're, they're grinding the shell down, maybe? Yes. Yes. And uh, so I've been living in Mexico for the last few years. 
I was up here visiting them when this all started going down and I decided to stay. And in a way it's like, I'm going, I'm back to being a five-year-old in some ways, you know, or back to being, you know, some of those points along the way where I was hurt as, as, a, as a baby, as a, as a child, as a young man, you know, not through any evil on my parents' part, but we all are processing a difficult world to live in and it affects people around us. And so this is causing so much opportunity, so much opening. Uh, and it's, it's like a blossoming. It's a blossoming of what has been going on for years. Uh, and so in that regard, it's just, oh, it's, uh, you know, to be able to feel like a little five-year-old kid again, get to be in my forties and then sort of integrating it. And, you know, sometimes I'm like so fearful, oh my God, the world's going to hell in a handbasket and they're going to be microchipping all the vaccinated people. And, you know, and I'm like, oh, it feels so good to be a little baby again, you know? <laughs> so that's sort of what's most real and present for me internally closest to my heart how about for you it's uh i go through waves of like deep acceptance of everything I've had some losses in my life recently, just before this COVID thing hit very close to me. And um, and so, and then this whole world, so I'm feeling mortality. Not really mine, I don't really, <laughs> don't really give a shit about mine. Um, <laughs> I've crossed that barrier border, I don't know, it felt, you know, a few times or come close mm -hmm. to here, so. So there's that going on and just a deep acceptance of everything. If, if, you know, what's the worst that can happen is, is, is all the worst that can happen. Mm -hmm. A vast amount of people die. Um, and all the tragedy that causes the vast implications to economies, exchange, Craziness can break out, looting, civil war, just make chaos, mayhem, survival. You know, I've seen, you know, those commercials where, or I've seen on YouTube or whatever, where there's Black Friday sale and people banging, smashing down the door when the door opens, trampling each other to get a sale for a TV. Sale. Willing to step on each other's backs. So I go, what happens if there's less bread or water, let alone a sale? So to me, that's the worst case scenario. And I believe, and I feel, so I, I have deep acceptance of it. And there's a, I went through a period of sadness, but now I'm in a state of acceptance. And then I'll just swing. I'll wake up one morning and I'll just feel total like, um, like, uh, like the rage of injustice. Like like Shiva burning in my blood, you know? Ruka Shiva burning in my blood. I um I mean a very privileged I have a very privileged life. I'm becoming very aware of that. Don't take it for granted at all. So they, that's a, that's arising in me, how privileged I am which puts me, I feel, in a stage of life of duty. Not obligation to anyone else, just duty to my own being, duty to humanity, duty to the, the world. And so that anger, I'm aiming to channel it and um, make good of it rather than let it rage on anyone or just blow. I'm... Uh, sharpening in it and turning into a laser and honing it and aiming to make um, a, a strong weapon of it. But sourced in my freedom, sourced in my heart. So that's what's going on and it's going on in various forms, but that's the alchemical experience I'm having. And a lot of love, a lot of love and gratitude and appreciation. 
I love you, man. <laughs> yeah. Go, <Good>, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but look, there's Tom Fuckery going on. There is. And, there and is. To, me, to me, it doesn't look, it doesn't have to be cabals. It doesn't have to be off planet beings. It doesn't have to be subtle, ephemeral, Doctor Strange enemies, you know, in, the, in, in, in dark realms. There may be realities, and I, my experience is, is that as, there's seven billion plus realities, human realities. So I can't argue with, are they real or not? All I can recognize is, is that, there, that everyone has their own subjective experience. And to the degree we're fixated around our subjective experience is to the degree that we'd stick our heels in the dirt to the degree that we can't cooperate and feel the already inherent mycelium connection that's just starving for attention with each other, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's already yeah. there. Unity is already there. You know how the mycelium grows? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> you make more babies. <laughs> I mean, that's... You know, what I wanted to bring up in this whole... Um, from a Zen Chan meditative perspective, right, is the principle of de-identification. Right. The, the understanding of de-identification, that the constellation or the sense of self before one awakens in self-knowing or knowledge is, is a constellation of identities picked up, imprinted, reinforced, um, reinforced by suppression, reinforced by so many things, most of it unconscious. The identity, I'm a father, I'm a business person, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a star angel, whatever, whatever the, whatever the identification is, right? And in the process of Zen or self-inquiry, you know, for many years, I gave this illumination intensive. We had hundreds of people doing five days of intense meditation. First day is settling in, learning the methodology. Three days of Zen koans for 40-minute uh, dyad sessions. Tell me who you are. And you would respond through a meditation process. I would say, thank you. Then we switch. You would say, tell me who you are. I'd do a meditation, respond with whatever arises. It's a de-identification process. So the identity that who am I arises to the surface. Oh, I'm a teacher. I'm a friend. I'm a brother to someone, mother to someone, a, a father to someone else. All these identities arise. You express it. The expression and the reception of it, the understanding of it, allows that identity to dissolve. No longer you're identified to it. And that the cycling back and forth after a while, you exhaust out all the layers and constellations of identity until you finally come to a place of ripeness for self-illumination. You can't make it happen. That part is by the great unknown, the X factor, God, grace, whatever. But you can prepare yourself to be empty enough so that you could be filled. And so I feel like there's a beautiful de-identification process that's yearning to be embraced here. That if we allow ourselves to embrace, ah, oh, what's the, ah, oh, fuck. I got this identity of one who's mad at, I got the identity of one who can't stand for that, or I got the identity of one who feels I'll never get out of this, what the hell will I do? To look at ourselves as, not look at that as us, but to look at that as an identity and then give it to grace, give it to spirit. Just know that you don't have to hold on to that identity, not even the emotions of it, the, the, the holding identity that holds that body mind expression, that that alone, but even the identity can be released. And when, when that happens, there's a speeding, there's a quickening of uh, reharmonizing with true nature. Mm. So I'd love to hear what how what your sense is of how we can use this time um, to quicken our harmonization with self, with life.
I wake up every morning and immediately the sensations, I become present to the sensations. It's different every morning, but often there's, you know, there's, there's emotion. I, I, I can put words to it like anger, despair, fear, joy. Um, but if there's just the physical sensation, that's almost the identification you're talking about getting through that and just experiencing that physical sensation. It's often, it's like I'm being tossed, I'm being spun, I'm being, you know, and, and so then I think about, you know, the politicians and they're, they're feeling the same thing. They're being tossed and spun. They're, you know, the, the, the Gateses and the, you know, whoever else, the Fauci's and the Trump's and the, the Trudeau's, they're, everybody's being tossed in this wave. And so just allowing myself to go into that immediate physical experience of being and breathing with it. And, you know, uh, recognizing the identification, recognizing the connection, the, the the way I grab onto the righteous anger, the fury, the, the concern, the, whatever it may be. And, you know, there's the, the idea of there's the, the central pure awareness. And then on the left hand is the, uh, the destruction of illusion. And on the right hand is the, as the life force moves through me, it acts may appear that I'm acting, that's the non-doing. And you know, I think a big part of you ask what to do, I think a big part of it is the non-doing and just allowing, allowing the feeling, allowing the opening of the heart, allowing the opening of the belly, of the knees, of the shoulders, of just allowing the chaos that's flowing everywhere to flow through me without resistance to just be aware of it, to feel it. And from there, have faith. Have faith that each of us is needed here. Each of us is valued here by Mother Earth and the Father Sky, by all of our relations. We're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose. And it's not our own. It's, it's to be a part of everything that's happening whichever way we can or are naturally. It's not even about what I can, it's, a, it's here. It's happening. It's moving through us this same wave. We're all feeling these waves and the turmoil of the waves crashing. And so to have faith in that, to have faith in the fact that we exist together, that we feel each other, that we love each other, that we can love each other, even those most challenging to us. If we can open to them, not to change them, not to educate them, not to get them to buy into our identification, but just to be a part of the experience together. Again, it's that breakdown of, of the rigidity. That rigidity is collapsing and becoming the fluidity of connection, of emotion, passing between people, through people. It's just and that, well, one, yeah, <laughs> thank you. To have faith that out of that soil, life grows. Out of that soil, life grows. Okay, I'm finished. I'd just like to invite all of us just to sit for a minute or so. Be with us.
Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone.